the, you may have seen the, the topic or the heading uh, that I have, you know, that came to my mind is spiritual growth um, has been written there. So the portion that was taken this morning was from First Peter, as we have read. And the word there is grow thereby. You know, the whole purpose of, you know, we coming to church, you know, we coming to Jesus is to grow and become a mature Christian, a mature child of God, a mature person, so that the whole purpose of growth is once we grow, we beget children. That's the whole purpose. You know, um, as I was meditating within my heart, you know, we are all in this process of growing. Uh, what is that purpose? Ultimately, the purpose is that we become like Christ. So we grow, we become like Christ, and then we produce other offspring, Christ-like offspring. Not that you have chosen me, but I have chosen you to bear fruit. And how can we bear fruit? Only when we reach that particular level of maturity and growth. And that is what God is calling this morning to each one of us. You know, we may be in different stages of our growth, but it doesn't matter. Once we are born into the kingdom of God, we will become like Christ. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. We will become Christ-like. But often when we see this picture, there are a lot of hindrances to the growth. There are a lot of challenges to the growth. You know, the greatest challenge, as we know, is the world. The sin and our own flesh. You know, the world, sin and flesh. And, you know, as we have read here, Apostle Peter is, Peter is exhorting the believers that, like newborn babes, desire for the word of God. So, what are the, what are the checklists? So, basically, I would summarize uh, what I was going to deliver in few things. That is the checklist for our growth. You know, we need to make sure that these things are there and these things are not there in our life to make sure that we attain the growth. So the first question is, you know, we can only grow once we are born. You know, nobody can grow unless you're born, right? So the first and foremost thing we need to understand is that, are we born again into the kingdom of God? This is a very serious question. Am I a child of God? Is that my identity? Do I have the born again experience? Jesus, when, while speaking to Nicodemus, in John chapter 3, he says very clearly, unless you are born again, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, just pictureize yourself. You know, when I'm saying some examples, not every aspect of the examples will be, you know, uh, appropriate for that. I mean, you cannot make doctrines out of the examples, but certain examples I'm telling because you can understand certain process. So the spiritual process is like, for the salvation, there are three steps. Number one is, you know, as we all know, we are all justified in Christ. That is the moment when we are born again into the family of God. So even in this uh, epistle of Peter, few verses before uh, this verse, you know, chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So we are born again through the word of God. So what is the word of God? You know, John chapter 1, 1, it says, the word is mentioned as Jesus. Jesus is the word, revealed word of God, the manifested word of God. And he himself has given, you know, God the Father gave his son so that we can have eternal life when we believe in him. So we come to Jesus only through faith in the word. You know, faith in the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, once that happens, we are born into the kingdom of God. When we realize that we are sinners, I am lost. Without Christ, I don't have an existence. I cannot have my sins forgiven without Christ. I am condemned before God. I am an enemy to God. I do not deserve this. And once we come to that realization, we are given an answer. You know, unless you are a patient, you cannot access a doctor. Or you're, you don't even bother to see a doctor, right? You will go, out, go to a hospital when you have some symptoms. So when we realize about the depth of my sin, I will understand the need of a savior. Young, youngsters, 
brothers and sisters have we understood the depth of our sin how corrupted we are how lost we are hallelujah how terrible am i how wretched am i i cannot do anything apart from sin that is that is that is how capable we are but then god out of his great love has given his son to be a propitiation for our sin so that we can have friendship with god fellowship with god that is a starting point it is just like you get admission into a in a program a phd program or a, a, a university you get an admission so there are three steps first getting into the admission the second is a training process and the final is a graduation so three steps so just like that our walk with christ also has three phases in terms of salvation it has a past phase a present phase and a future phase the past phase is the time when we come into that first contact with god when we are born again into the family of god that is when we are justified the process of justification you know we are justified freely because of what jesus have died but that doesn't end there it is just a process you know you're being admitted to a worldly university maybe because of your merits right you know because of how great you are or how much academic qualifications you have but that's not the basis of how god justifies me it's not because of what i did in ephesians 2 verse 8 it clearly tell we are not saved by work but by faith and the grace of god you know two elements of faith in the word of god faith in god and the grace that was manifested for us so these two things enable us to be born again to bo- to be born into the kingdom of god so that's when we are justified you know we are freely labeled as just justified people you know not because of what i did but because of what jesus did on the cross so that's the first thing and the second thing is this ever you know kind of lasting process you know it's a kind of a, a, a it's a rest of the life until we die or until the second coming of the of the lord jesus christ that's that whole process that is the training period that is the period whereby we are becoming like christ that is the process of sanctification sanctification means meaning set apart for god to be set apart for god and in the verse of romans it says to be dead to sin and to become alive to god to give myself as an instrument of righteousness you know what was my past my past was like i was dead in in trespasses and sin i was dead in my t- sins and trespasses i was away from god i would not respond to the word of god i cannot respond to the voice of god even i cannot hear the voice of god but then once we are born again into the family of god our spirit is enlightened our spirit is renewed or quickened quickened is the word that is used you know in ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 we are being quickened our spirit is quickened so that we can respond to god you know once you are admitted to a university you become part of that university you become part of that program you are going to be abiding by the rules and regulations of that university you know you are being identified as a you know as a as a part of that program that is your identity from here after you know maybe you go to a med school you know you're going to be a doctor but are you yet a doctor no you're not yet a doctor but you are going to be a doctor but there is a big process christians we need to understand that this process is very important we cannot ignore this process the fact that once we 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 accepted jesus as our lord and savior being justified in the presence of god doesn't necessarily make us perfect or doesn't necessarily you know take us to the end the process that i have to go through is that sanctification through justification we are freed from the penalty of sin through sanctification we are freed from the power of sin on a day to day basis on a day to day basis there is sin around me i can i'm not yet free from the presence of sin i am in the presence of sin but the sin wants to consume me just like you know god said to cain sin is encroaching upon you it it has its desire for you just like that on a day to day basis sin is crowding is is encroaching in my area through temptations but then god is commanding us to overcome them through jesus christ because now we have a renewed relationship and that renewed relationship is i am alive to god previously i am dead to god now i am alive to god so that is why this first verse it tells lay aside all malice deceit 
hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. So the problem with all of these things, these are fleshly things, things pertaining to world, things that those are enemies to God. So when we have these things that we cherish upon, the problem is that this is going to drastically affect our growth. You know, a fetus that is born in the, in the womb of a mother, it has nine months to achieve a particular level of growth. The reason is that if the fetus doesn't achieve that particular level of growth, you know, it cannot be born into the, uh, the world. You know, it can affect the, the, the birth, it can affect the afterlife here, right? You know, the life on earth. Just like that, the time that we have here on earth, the spiritual life that we have here on earth is to prepare for eternity, is to prepare to become like Christ so that when he comes, as, John, as 1 John chapter 3 says, when he comes, we will completely become like him. That is what is called glorification. That is the third and final step of our salvation. To be glorified, to become like Christ. Completely become like Christ. You know, to, to have that glory. You know, we are not going to become like God, but then we will become like Christ. You know, to be partakers of Him. That is glorification. So unless you are born again, you cannot enter in the process of sanctification. And unless you go through the, the born again step and the sanctification, you cannot be glorified. That is what... Uh, you know, in Romans chapter 6, it says very clearly, Likewise, you also reckon, 6 verses 11, Reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, only we, once we are dead to Christ and, and resurrected with Christ, you know, once we identified with Christ, only then we will have the partake of that resurrection. It is very important. So, how would God allow this growth to happen? Number one is, Things which take away my appetite to the word of God. Brothers and sisters, including me, I'm asking this. How much of time am I spending with the word of God? Or even for that sake, if I'm spending time with the word of God, how much of taste or appetite am I having to spend time with the word of God? That is what it says here very clearly. You know, unless you take away, get rid of that worldly pattern, that worldly thought process from my life, I cannot have the appetite. I may be born into the kingdom of God, but if I decide to take along with me all these evil things, the patterns of the world, then I cannot understand the will of God. I cannot grow and I cannot love the word of God. Can you move the next slide? So the, the following verse, it says, coming to him. So that is the most important thing. Coming to Jesus on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is the process of, of sanctification. On a day-to-day -day basis, I need to make sure that I come to Jesus. I come to Jesus for life. Because only person who can give me the real life, the eternal life, the abundant life is Jesus. There's nobody else in this world. What Satan is trying to do, what the world is trying to do is to lure us, to redirect our focus or attention away from the source of life to the things of the world. And once Satan achieves that through the temptation, when we fall into sin over and over again, we will, we, our hearts can be hardened and our faith can be lost. We need to be very careful about this. We should not let ourselves to have a hardened heart which will enable us to reject God. So instead of that, come to Jesus on a day-to-day -day basis. How? To a living stone. Just like Jesus is a living stone, we need to come. You know, as a, as a, as a born-again Christian, as a child of God, I have the access to the throne, access to the throne where I previously did not have access. Now I have full access and freedom. I have to make the most of it. You know, you are being admitted into a university and what benefit is this if you are going to bunk the classes? What benefit is there if you're going to skip the classes and do the things that you like to do? Will you be a proper professional? Will you be a proper person intended for that particular course? No. The reason why we are becoming like, why we are children of God is that, you know, we may have failures. That's a different story. But do we have the submission and surrenderance to come to Jesus, meditate on the word of God, become hungry and thirst after the word of God? If there is none, none like that, if we don't have that appetite, if we don't have that taste, 
And that means there is something that is hindering. Just like this verse initially it says, all these malices, the evil speaking, the hypocrisy, all these things, we have to set away. Things which take our focus and attention away from Jesus, we have to willfully take it out from our life and submit to Jesus. Lord, if you are struggling from some temptation, God will help us. You know, temptations are directed to take away from God, but then God will ordain us tribulations. Those are difficult. You know, Jesus said that unless you suffer with me, you cannot reign with me in glory. His disciples asked him, you know, I want to sit your right and left when, you know, in your kingdom. But then he asked, can you drink the cup that I am drinking? Can you drink the, 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 the suffering cup, the cup of suffering that I am going through? And it is not unto me, it is unto the Father. Hallelujah. It is easy to share the glory. But before glory, there is a process of tribulation. Which God will allow in our heart, in our life, to enhance our faith. You know, just like that, we come to Christ as living stones. You know, as renewed Christians, as, as born again Christians, we come to Christ. And what is the result? As living stones built unto a spiritual house. So the, the reason why we come to Christ is to become as a part of the building of Christ. The church, which is his body. You know, we are all individual organs, individual, you know, hands, legs, eyes, ears. We all have different functions, but we all work within the harmony of the Spirit of God. According to the unction of the Spirit of God, these are lively experiences that the Lord wants to give to us. My time is coming to a conclusion. Hallelujah. Jesus suffered rejection by men. That's what it says. Jesus suffered rejection by men, but was approved of God, chosen of God. He's still a hindrance to many people because of this same rejection. All the people of God. You know, we heard about Elijah this morning. You know, he was rejected by his own people. We know about Moses. He came to his own. He was rejected by his own people. But Moses decided, I will share with the reproach of Christ. It is very important. It is a painful process to go through it. Rejected by people, rejected by the majority. But unless we go through that, we cannot be sanctified. We cannot be identifying with Christ unless we go through it. We have to let ourselves to become free from our sin, from the power of the sin. There is only one way to be sanctified, to be set apart for God and to, and to yield to his righteousness. Hallelujah. Next slide. I just summarized it, you know, the checklist that this morning that we want to check with ourselves. What, what are the things that I need to look when I say that I need to be grown, growing in spirit, spiritual growth. It is very essential for our eternity. Number one, we have to be make sure that we have to be born again through the spirit of God. Number two, we have to be separate from the world. World includes all the evil things, you know, the world and its passions, the lust of the world, the lust of the eyes, and the passions of the world. And we have to overcome that. We have to be separated. We have to have a separate path. Three is the appetite for the word. Just check. Do I have the appetite for listening the word of God, reading the word of God, meditating the word of God? If not, the growth cannot happen. If not, I would not become like Christ. Number four, identifying with Jesus. Identifying with Jesus includes identifying with, with his death and resurrection. Identifying with his death is the process. You know, once we believe that, you know, when we are born again, we believe that experience that I died with Christ while he was in the Calvary. But then on a day-to-day -day basis to take up the cross and to follow him. That is what identifying with Jesus. When we identify with Jesus, we become a ridicule to the world. And then number five, spiritual sacrifices. That is the living sacrifices. Romans 12 verse 1 to 4. We know that very by heart as a living sacrifice. You know, come to Jesus as living stones for the building of the kingdom of God, for enhancing the kingdom of God, for the purpose of the glory of God. I need to give up myself. I need to give up my own things. Forget my own passions and desires and focus on the work of God, looking unto Jesus. And then that final thing, glorification, living hope. Do I have that hope? The lively hope of eternity. This is a sure hope. The other day, we all have hopes in this world, but all those hopes are uncertain, right? You know, the hopes that we may have 
all those hopes are uncertain. But there's only one hundred percent sure hope. That is the hope we have in Christ. If we are justified, we will be glorified. If we go through that process of sanctification, just like you have received Jesus Christ, continue in fellowship with Jesus Christ. Colossians 2 verses 6. Continuing that fellowship until we reach the fulfillment, the adoption of the sons. When we are freed from the presence of sin, when we become completely like Christ, away from all the stains and presence of sin, we are freed from the penalty of sin, the power of sin and presence of sin and that will happen when we are glorified. That is our hope. You know, earthly things, the trials, temptations, tribulations, when all of these things happen, our hope should remain firm. It will not be shaken that I will become like Christ. Let that be the passion. Let that be the desire. Let that be the hope. Continued lively hope. May God bless you with these words. And Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this precious time. Lord, we are called for that heavenly purpose and heavenly calling. Help us not to shirk away from that, Lord. Lord, I submit myself, I submit each and everyone in this sanctuary, God. Help us to become like Christ. Help us to be like your children. Imitate us of yourself in this evil world. Get rid of all the things that are binding us to earth. But binding us to heaven, Lord. Focusing my attention to heavenly things, not on earthly things. Hallelujah. I need to grow, mature and become like you completely. Thank you, Lord. Empower each one of us. Thank you for this, sir. Thank you for our pastors. Thank you for our youngsters. Thank you. We bless your name. Love your name. Thank you for the cross. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless.